So you want full marks in your reading comprehension SATS paper. Well, this is the video for you because today, myself, a teacher, is gonna take you through the hardest ever set of questions created. I'm not just exaggerating for the video, I really do mean it, the 2016 reading paper in the SATs is known as the hardest paper ever. So I'm gonna walk you through the second text. Now, if you haven't checked out part one, my first video where I go through the first text, go and do that before you watch this one. I've got some new strategies and some extra tips for you to go through now. So let's get let's dive straight into it. Now, in the first video, I, I had a bit of a dilemma and I was talking about whether we should read the text first and spend five minutes or so doing that or whether we should just save the five minutes and get straight to the questions. You might have your own preferred strategy for this, but I'm here today to tell you something I didn't tell you in the last one, which is it's not always the best thing to, to go straight to the questions. I'm gonna show you why straight away. Before I do anything else on this, I'm gonna skip straight to question one. Just have a look with me before we even read it. Look at this. Now it says 12, because remember this is the second text in the paper, but it's the first question on this text. And look, just looking at question one, you've got to tick four things or circle four things. And if you actually look at what it's asking you to do, circle the correct option, it asks you something about the beginning of the text. Then it asks you something about that comes after that. Then it asks you something that happens way later in the text. And then it asks you something about the end of the text. The literal first question needs you to know the entire story to even be able to answer it. And you could say, yeah, yeah, I can always come back and answer that question later. But it happens again with the next question as well. So do you know what? Sometimes it might just be useful to have a flick through the questions and, and see what kind of text you should be doing, what kind of strategy you should be using. Now, we'll give you, we'll give you some advice. If it's a non-fiction and it's got subheadings in it, you don't need to read it first. Subheadings are so good because they already tell you what information is going to be just below it in lovely little chunks, little titles. So you can kind of just use that to your advantage and just go through the questions, find the information, look for the subheadings to find the information as you need it. Unless, of course, it asks you for a summary. So stories are more likely to give you questions where it's like, hey, summarize the entire story in order. And you're like, oh, now I've got to read the whole thing. So I think we should read it. This time we're gonna read the whole thing. And it should take about five minutes. It's 775 words. It's not a crazy amount, but it is quite a lot. Now, if you're like me and you have a brain like an orange, and you forget everything, um, by the time I get to the end of that text, I've genuinely forgotten the kind of details of the start. So I've got some really good advice for you today. Um, and that is to use visualization and summary to help you. Now, before I do that, you'll notice I skipped over a slide there. I wanna talk about this quickly. In the last video, I gave you some, some of my favorite phrases to use. This is gonna come up again today. Write this down if you haven't already. These kind of phrases right here will help you get all of the marks in those pesky inference questions where you have to prove your answer with evidence. So if you can bank those phrases in your head, you're gonna do better, okay? So we'll use them across this whole video. Anyway, back to what I was saying summarizing and visualizing. So what I want you to do is as I read this to you, or perhaps you want to pause the video and read it yourself for a more realistic experience, because let's face it, you're not going to have a teacher there reading this text to you in, on the day. You're going to have to read it yourself. If there's any tricky vocabulary, you're just going to have to work it out yourself. And what I want you to do is visualize it as you go. And I mean, think of it like a movie, like really, really deeply think about the scene. And that's because our brains are very good at remembering images and they're not very good at remembering words because at the end of the day, they are just squiggles on paper, aren't they? That we've all agreed the meaning of and learned about. V images are way more natural to us. So if you can turn this into a little film in your head, you're more likely to remember the events as they happen in order. And summarizing is the same thing. It's just doing it in words. You know, a little summary, say to yourself a little summary after every paragraph or two. I'm going to model that to you right now as we start reading this story called Wild Ride. Here we go. Dawn was casting spun gold threads across a, rose, a rosy sky over Sawabuna Game Reserve. As Martin Allen took a last look around to ensure there weren't any witnesses. Interesting. So straight away, I'm imagining, I'm imagining this person, Martin Allen, whoever that is, in this lovely um, uh, environment you can see above actually in the picture, looking around. She's clearly doing something she's not supposed to, right? Looking around to see if there aren't any witnesses. Maybe she's doing something bad. She leaned forward like a jockey on the track, wound her fingers through a silver mane, interesting, and cried, go, Jemmy, go. So it's building up this idea that she's obviously just got on some sort of animal that has a mane, and now she's telling it to go, so she's riding it. The white giraffe sprang forward, okay, we know it's a giraffe, sprang forward so suddenly that she was almost unseated, but she recovered, and wrapping her arms around his neck, 
quickly adjusted to the familiar rhythm of Jemmy's rocking horse stride. They swept past the dam and a herd of bubble-blowing hippos, past a flock of startled egrets lifting from the trees like white glitter, and out onto the open savannah plain. An early morning African chorus of doves, crickets and go-away birds provided a soundtrack. So this is what I mean. Hopefully you guys have got a really clear image in your head of what's just happened. Now summarise it. Have a go. Say out loud right now, pause the video if you want to, in 10 seconds, no more than 10 seconds, summarise to me what has just happened there. And the way to imagine this, by the way, a good fun way of doing it, imagine you've got to tell someone but they're leaving in 10 seconds. They're literally just leaving the door right now. And they're like, oh, quick, what was that? What, what just happened? I didn't hear. What happened? Quickly tell me. I've got to go. What would you say to them? Because you'll naturally pick out the key information if someone's about to leave the room and you've got to tell them. You wouldn't say, oh, Dawn was casting us a, a, a spun gold threads across the, the rosy sky. That's not going to be your summary, is it? Let's be honest. What you're going to say is something like, there's a girl and she's riding a giraffe in the African savannah. At first, she was going to fall off. It looked, felt like she was going to fall off, but then they got into a steady stride. Okay, that's pretty much it, isn't it? That's what I've imagined. This girl is on the back of a giraffe and she's riding it in the African savannah. Pretty cool. Let's keep reading. Now, guys, like I said, if you want to take this more seriously, pause the video and read it yourself rather than listening to me only because it's not going to be the same experience. I am going to read it, however, so that I can talk you through my summaries and visualizations and, and how that's going to help us later, you will see. Okay. For a long time, Martine had only ever ridden Jeremy at night and in secret. But when her grandmother had found out about their nocturnal adventures, she'd promptly banned them on the grounds that the game reserve's deadliest animals were all in search of dinner after dark and there was nothing they'd like more than to feast on a giraffe riding 11 year old. For a while, Martine had defied her, but after several close calls and one terrible row with her grandmother, she had come to accept that the old lady was right. When lions were on the hunt, the game reserve was best avoided. Okay, quick summary. Hopefully you visualised that. We had a bit of a flashback there, maybe, to her arguing with her grandmother who had found out she's been riding this giraffe at night time when she shouldn't. Now, a quick summary is, okay, um, she normally rides it at night, uh, but she knows she shouldn't. Grandma found out and and sort of convinced her that actually maybe riding at night time isn't the best idea because she might get eaten by some lions. Let's keep reading. Another of her grandma's rules was that Martine ride sedately at all times. Now, if you don't know what sedately means, here's the great thing. You can work it out from the rest of this sentence. Ready? No faster than a trot. And in fact, I'd rather you stuck to a walk. She had she'd counselled sternly. I think from that we can work out that sedately must mean calmly, right? Like you're not move, not don't go too fast, basically. Martine had paid almost no attention. The way she saw it, Jemmy was a wild animal, and it was only fair that he should have the freedom to do what came naturally. And if that meant tearing across the savannah at a giraffe's top speed of 35 kilometers per hour, well, there wasn't a lot she could do about it. It wasn't as if she had reins to stop him. Besides, what was the point of riding a giraffe if the most he was permitted to do was plod along like some arthritic pony from the local stables? So to me, I'm getting this idea that she's got a bit of an attitude. I don't know if you're imagining that. A bit of an attitude. She's been told by her grandma not to do it, but she's a bit like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it anyway, because this is what I think, and what I think is more important, because she's a free animal. So she sounds a bit adventurous, you know, a bit, bit kind of like... Um, a bit, almost a bit naughty, but I don't know. We don't know enough evidence yet. She definitely doesn't seem to follow the rules. And she has a strong opinion about what a giraffe should be allowed to do. Let's keep reading. Jemmy clearly agreed. They flew across the grassy plain with the spring breeze in Martine's ears. Faster, Jemmy, she yelled. Run for your life. And she laughed out loud at the heart pounding thrill of it of racing a wild giraffe. Okay, she's mega adventurous, isn't she, this Martine? And she definitely ignored grandma because she absolutely didn't even try to get it to walk. She encouraged Jemmy the giraffe to run even faster. Okay, guys, what I've done for you there is I've modeled to you how if I was reading this paper and I was doing this test for the first time, exactly what I'd be doing in my head. I'd be having this dialogue in my head. I would stop after every paragraph and summarize it to myself what's going on in this story because now I'm way more likely to be able to get to the end of this story and be able to summarize the whole thing because I've done this journey on the way okay useful tip guys please listen and take it in because it will help you let's keep reading it's quite long 
A streak of grey cut, cut across her vision, accompanied by a furious nasal squeal. Whee! Jeremy swerved. In the instant before her body parted company with the white giraffes, Martine caught a glimpse of a warthog charging from its burrow, yellow tusks thrust forward. Had her arms not been wrapped so tightly around the giraffe's neck, she would have crashed ten feet to the ground. As it was, she just sort of swung under his chest like a human necklace. And you can see that in the picture there, guys. There she dangled while Jemmy pranced skittishly, and the warthog, intent on defending her young, let out enraged squeals from below. Five baby warthogs milled around in bewilderment, spindly tails pointing heavenwards. So let's summarise that one. She's riding the giraffe. The giraffe has been cut up by a uh, warthog, which has run out of its little home um, with its five little ones, clearly trying to protect, protect them or something. It's getting aggravated because they're near her little baby warthogs. It's really angry. In all that commotion, um, Martine has actually fallen off of Jemmy, but managed to just hold on around the neck by her arms, as you can see in the picture. So pretty dangerous, right? Let's keep reading. That summary is helpful, isn't it? The pain in Martine's arms was nearly unbearable, but she didn't let go. She adored warthogs, warts, rough skin, ugly ears and all, but their Hollywood movie star eyelashes didn't fool her. In a blink of those lashes, their tusks could reduce her limbs to bloody ribbons. Wow, really intense description there. She's essentially telling us that even though they've got nice cute eyelashes and she loves them, she's very aware that they're extremely dangerous, right? They could reduce her limbs to ribbons. That means they could tear her apart because they're very strong and dangerous. Last bit of the story, and you have a go at summarizing this time. Pause the video afterwards and have a go at summarizing this and the entire story. See if you can do it in under 20 seconds. Jemmy, she said through gritted teeth, walk on, good boy. Confused, the white giraffe started to lower his neck as he backed away from the warthog. No, Jemmy, shrieked Martine as the warthog nipped at the toe of one of her boots. Walk on, walk on. Jemmy snatched his head up to evade the warthog's sharp tusks, and Martine was able to use the momentum to hook her legs around his neck. Can you guys imagine that? Have you got that in your head? Can you imagine the warthog getting really near to Jemmy's head because the giraffe's quite low, and, it, and Jemmy gets spooked and lifts her head up, and being a giraffe and very big, the force of pulling up allows Martine to kind of swing up as well and actually land back on the giraffe. Can you visualize that? Because if you can, you've already got a huge advantage over 90% of children who will do this. They will skim read this and they won't use that skill. Let's keep reading. From there, she was able to haul herself onto his back and urge him into a sprint. Soon, the warthog family was a grey blur in the distance, although the mother's grunts of triumph no, uh, took longer to fade. Martine rode the rest of the way home at a gentle walk. A thoughtful smile on her lips. What do you think she was thinking about? Maybe the fact that she did actually nearly get in big trouble for ignoring her grandma's advice? I don't know. That would teach her to show off, even if it was only to an audience of hippos. At the game reserve gate, Jemmy dipped his head and Martine slid down his slithery neck as though, he was sh as though she was shooting down a water slide. That, too, wasn't the safest way of dismounting, but it was fun. She gave the white giraffe a parting hug and strolled through the mango trees to the thatched house. Okay, take some time now. Pause this video. Can you out loud, even if you're talking to yourself, it's okay, people will just think you're mad. Don't worry about it. Can you out loud summarize that entire story, only the key information in less than 20 seconds? What would you say to me if I was leaving the door right now and I just really needed to know what happened in that story? Have a go. Pause the video. What would you say? Okay, my turn. I would say this. Um, Martine is a girl who lives in the African savanna and she's quite adventurous and she knows she shouldn't, but she rides this wild giraffe that lives in her game reserve. And one day she took her out uh, riding and nearly got killed by a bunch of boars, uh, or a boar and, and its little family, a warthog, sorry. Um, but luckily she got away and, um, and, went, and went home. That's it. That's it. That to me is the story. That's the main stuff, yeah? So that's it. We've got it in our heads now. Now we can really just tackle these questions properly. Now, it doesn't mean you won't need to go back to the text. All right. So as a teacher, if I was doing this, if I'm sat there doing this for the first time, I'm still going to go back to the text to find my evidence to back up my answers. I'm going to use my phrases. Where are they? 
I'm gonna use those phrases in my head every single question I do to make sure that I'm proving it and I'm not just guessing or assuming. Guessing and assuming will lose you marks. Let's have a look at the first question then. Circle the correct option to complete each sentence below. The text begins with Martine going out, out to ride her giraffe early in the morning, midday, in the late afternoon or at night. I can't remember. Can you remember? Maybe you can. I, I told you I have the brain of an orange. So let's go back and have a look. Right at the start, dawn was casting. Okay, it was dawn. All right, what does that mean? From dusk till dawn, that normally means the other way around, but dawn is in the morning when there weren't any witnesses. Now, you can even back that understanding up because in the next paragraph after it says, for a long time, she'd ridden at night. So it's suggesting that she doesn't do that anymore. Okay, so at the start of the text, let's go back to this. The text begins with Martin going out to ride her giraffe in the early, uh, giraffe, giraffe in the early morning. Cool. B, Martin rode her giraffe. Slowly, speedily, safely, or fearfully. I think it was really obvious from the text that she did not listen to her grandma's advice. And also, she's not really fearful at all. She's pretty brave. She just rode the giraffe speedily because she shouldn't have been. Next one. And the evidence for that, by the way, was the bit where she's running through and, and then she's got, she got the wind in her hair and she was going, she was saying, faster, Jemmy. Everything was fine that day. That's true. Until what? Well, what's the main problem that happened? In our little summary, the problem was the fact that they disturbed a warthog family. That's what happened, wasn't it? And then the last one, at the end of the text, Martine, what does she do? <clears throat> she went back home unharmed, ran home to get help. We know that didn't happen. Cried all the way home. We know that didn't happen. Carried on riding for hours. Nope. We actually know that she walked back and she was thoughtful, wasn't she? Because we, when we were summarizing, we thought, I wonder if she was thinking about how she probably listened, should have listened to grandma's advice. She went back home unharmed. A hard question to start, right? But because we read the text and visualized and summarized, it was actually kind of easy. I just forgot about the first line. You probably remembered that it was at dawn, the crack of dawn in the, in the morning. Okay, next question. Look at the first paragraph, beginning, dawn was casting. How do you know that Martine wanted to keep this ride a secret? Well, I've put it down here, pause the video, have a go at this question. How do you know that she wanted to keep it a secret? It's this bit here, isn't it? She took a last look around to ensure there weren't any witnesses. When we visualized that, we actually said, didn't we, out loud, you can imagine her looking around because it looks like she's doing something she shouldn't be doing. That's why she wanted to keep it a secret. So that's what I put. I'm not even going to write it in there, guys. I'd write that word for word. I literally put she, because she took a last look around to ensure there weren't any witnesses, which suggests that, so imagine I've already written that first bit, which suggests that she didn't want anyone to know what she was doing. That's what I would write because that proves that this piece of evidence is linked to it being a secret. She was looking around for witnesses so that so that no one saw what she was doing because it was a secret. So you've got to use those phrases, guys. Next question. What were Martine's grandmother's rules about riding the giraffe? Now, really important. Rules and tick two. The amount of children that tick one on this one is unbelievable. Please pay attention to those finer details. You've got to tick two. Well, what were her rules? Well, we've already read the text. Maybe you can remember the rules. Pause the video, have a go. If not, the evidence is right there. Okay, so rules, very simple. In the second, I'm going to go backwards. In the second bit, this rule was really simple because it literally said the word rule. This is the one that kids normally get. She said, ride sedately at all time. In other words, walking only, okay? So keep to a slow speed. That, that's the first rule. It's the other rule that people struggle with normally because it's hidden in this first paragraph. And it says, for a long time, she rode at night. Her grandmother found out and she banned them. If you ban something, isn't that the same as making a rule? It is, isn't it, really? Think about something at school that's been banned. Well, the rule is you can't do that thing. So actually... She can ride only in the daylight. Her nan banned her from riding at nighttime. They're the two rules. Second one a bit easier. First one quite a lot harder to understand and get, but you just got to think about the language and what it means. Question 15, two marks. What evidence is there of Martine being stubborn? Really good question. Think about what this means. I'll tell you in a minute, but I want you to have a go first. Two pieces of evidence that Martine is stubborn. Now there is enough evidence down here in what I've copied. Have a go. So what does it mean to be stubborn? You've probably heard the, the people being called stubborn before, right? Maybe you don't really know what it means. 
Well, to be stubborn means to ignore advice given to you, despite the fact that it might be good advice, okay? You're being stubborn, you know? You don't want to listen to someone else's point of view or opinion, even though it might be a good point of your opinion. You're being stubborn. I, no, no, I know what I think, and I don't care what you think, I will just do what I do. I'll do what I think. Stubborn. So, you know, what evidence is there that she's being stubborn in the way she behaved with her grandma? Well, her grandma was telling her rules, right, and things to do and not to do. And then it go, goes and says this right at the beginning of this paragraph. Martine had paid almost no attention. That, to me, is evidence of someone being stubborn. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to listen. I don't even want to listen. So I would take that and I would put it right here, word for word. Notice I've done that a couple of times now. Just use the text as your answer. What better evidence? Martine had paid almost no attention, which means she wasn't willing to listen. That is what stubborn means. So I've really showed in my answer with my lovely phrase, which means I've really showed that I understand how this is proving that she's stubborn. Does that make sense, guys? Don't be afraid. You might just get the mark for using this. Don't get me wrong. They probably would just give you the mark. But why not be why not be safe rather than sorry? Use phrases to really back up your point. Okay, we need another reason that she's being, another way to prove that she's being stubborn. Okay, um, let's think about this. The way she saw it, Jemmy was a wild animal. So she does this whole... Um, does this whole spiel about the animal you know oh she, she's got to be she's got to be and then what was one of what was one of grandma's rules it was to not go fast right grandma said you must be you know walking speed preferred and then what does um martine end up going and doing we'll have a look down here she ends up allowing jemmy to run and she encourages him to run faster and do you know what i knew this answer because we did the summarizing and visualizing so well it wasn't hard for me to remember this and get this answer because I remember in my head visualizing the fact that she ignored her grandma and ran faster anyway. Hopefully you're starting to see the power of visualizing and summarizing the text as you read it. So my second point would be um, she allowed Jemmy to run faster despite the fact that, nice phrase there, despite the fact that grandmother told her not to all right or in other words she broke grandmother's rules by allowing jemmy to run faster so notice in both my ways of answering that i used the evidence i didn't just say she broke the rules i used it i backed it up she broke the rules by running faster when grandma told her not to you've got to, to do that to get the marks children lose so many marks by not clarifying their meaning what they mean and there's a second part to this question. It says, what evidence is there that Martine, of Martine being determined when she met the warthogs? What does determined mean, guys? Really think about the language. What does that actually mean? Sometimes thinking of the opposite helps. What's the opposite of determined? Giving up, I guess, right? If you're not determined, you just give up at something. Well, what evidence is there that she didn't give up then when she met the warthogs? I'm going to answer this one straight away because it's nice and easy. Look at this first sentence. The pain in Martine's arms was nearly unbearable. So she's in a lot of pain but she didn't let go. Is that not a perfect definition of determined? I'd reword it. I'd say she didn't, she didn't let go of Jemmy despite, I'm using it again, being in a lot of pain or an even better phrase would have just been to take that word there despite being in unbearable pain. So I'm really showing that I've used evidence from the text then. All right, nice and easy. So uh, you might notice that a lot of these questions really do rely on you understanding what these words mean, like determined. Um, and this is another classic example of it. So another inference question. By the way, they're at the top right. I should have said that ages ago. They're at the top right if you want to know what types of questions they are, like I did in the first video. It's always up there. This is a great one because I think this is a word meaning question, but they've put it down as an inference question. But there we are. Milled around in bewilderment. Explain what this description suggests about the baby warthogs. So I found it in the text for you here. Look, it says five baby warthogs milled around in bewilderment. Spindly tails pointing heavenwards. Two marks. What would you put? Pause the video, say it out loud or leave a comment or whatever. What would you put here to try and get two marks? Or how would you tackle this question? Whenever you get a two mark question like this, they come up every single year. What they're really asking you to do is explain what this means and explain what this means. 
There's two things happening in that sentence. There's two marks. It wants you to, to, to tell me what they mean. That's it. So what does it mean to mill around? If I said, if, you, if I asked you to imagine a bunch of things, a bunch of people milling around, what do you imagine they're doing? How do you think they're moving? Milling around. Maybe you've never heard of it before. Well, I'll tell you. Milling around means to walk around aimlessly. Like you don't know where you're going. Okay. And bewilderment, if you're bewildered, it means you're kind of confused. You know, you're almost surprised and confused. So there's two things happening here I could say about the baby warthogs. They were moving aimlessly. That's going to get me one mark because... It really proves this first point, what milled means, milled around. And they were confused. All right, guys, that's it. And they were confused, which is going to back up what bewildered means. That is how you get two marks. As simple as that. A very short sentence. doesn't need to be long. It just needs to show that you know what the first bit means and the second bit means for both marks. Nice. Question 17. What evidence in the text is there that warthogs can be dangerous? give two examples. Okay, it's just, it's a bit of inference, but it's mainly retrieval in my opinion. You can just find some easy facts here that they're dangerous. I suppose you have to infer that that means danger, but it's not too much of a hard inference. Two marks, pause the video, find me two examples. There's more than two, by the way. See if you can find more. Right, let's have a look at all of the possibilities for this one. There's lots of things you could have gone for. Here's the mark scheme. You could have gone for the fact that it charges her, or when it said its tusks are thrust forward. You could have gone for the fact that it said it had sharp tusks, or it said it would tear her to pieces. Remember, it said it would you know, make her into bloody ribbons or something. Um, the fact that it tries to bite her when it nips at her toe. The fact that the giraffe seems frightened. The giraffe, a very big animal, it seems frightened, doesn't it? Because it lunges its head up when the warthog gets near. And the fact that Martine didn't want to let go, to, despite being in pain, shows that clearly... There was an element of danger there, otherwise she would have just let go and, you know, climbed back on. So loads of things you could have put there. All evidence-based, though. None of these are based on your understanding of a warthog. Let's say you're a warthog pro, right? You just have, you're just like, oh my god, I love warthogs. I know everything about warthogs. And you know they're dangerous for some other reasons. You wouldn't get the marks, because it's a reading test. It doesn't care about your knowledge. It only cares about, hey, what does the text tell you, though? Prove to me that you can read the text by telling me what's dangerous. Number 18. What helped Martine to get safely on Jemmy's back after the warthog attack? This is a really good question. I remember a lot of kids in 2016. Yes, I've been teaching that long. I remember when they did this test. I remember a lot of them getting it wrong, even though they kind of knew the answer. So word this one really carefully. You've got the paragraph down here to help you. Pause the video. Use everything we've learned so far. Can you get one mark in this one? Now, if you just said something a bit too vague and simple, like Jemmy moving, or uh, Jemmy's neck, or the warthogs surprising Jemmy, you wouldn't actually get a mark. You have to be really precise. Like, what's what specifically? Imagine you could add in a word. What specifically helped her to get back on? Well, let's find it in the text. Jemmy snatched his head up to evade the warthogs' sharp tusks, and Martine was able to use the momentum to hook her legs around his neck. Okay, the momentum. That means the movement. So Martine used the movement of Jemmy snatching his head up to swing back on to Jemmy. That is what I would write down. Okay, I'm not going to waste your time writing it down because I've said it out loud. That is what I'd write down. If you haven't got the idea of the momentum from Jemmy's movement in your answer. If you haven't mentioned the momentum, you're actually not going to get the mark. They were really harsh with the marking because you've got to show that this specifically is the reason that she was able to get back up because he moved so quick that it pulled her and the momentum of her flying upwards meant that she could then kind of swing around and land back on his neck. Do you think that visualizing it earlier helped with that? I do. I think we all imagined it. We took the time to imagine that happening. And it probably made this question quite easy to answer because you're like, oh yeah, I remember her swinging on his neck when he pulled his head up rather than having to go back to the text. I don't know. Are you convinced? We'll see by the end of the video. Number 19. The warthog made grunts of triumph. The warthog mother made grunts of triumph. Why was she triumphant? Guys, I've not even, I've not even put this one in the bottom of the text because I think it's quite obvious, wasn't it? You know, the, if we've read the whole story, this is one of those questions where you can just quickly answer it. Why was she triumphant? Pause the video. You tell me. It's 
So let's go back on a little journey in our heads. Why was the Warthog Mother there? The Warthog Mother was there because she was trying to scare away Jemmy and Martine because she was with her little ones. She was clearly trying to protect them, right? So I can infer that the reason we found out about those little baby Warthogs and the fact that she ran out of her little home is because she was scared that they were about to get attacked. So she was trying to scare off or get rid of Jemmy and Martine. From the Warthog's perspective, did she do that? Yeah. Okay, so my answer is going to be because she successfully scared away the intruders, right? Because that's what they were. They, that's not their home. It was the Warthog's home. She success successfully scared away the intruders. Another answer you could put here and get the answers is that because she protect she protected her baby warthogs. You know, from her, but she doesn't know that um, Jemmy and Martin had no intention of attacking them. From the warthog's perspective, there were intruders there, and then she scared them, and they went off. And now she feels like she's protected her babies, and that both of those answers would give you a mark. Okay, guys. We're on to number 20. Now, that we've got a three-mark question. If you haven't checked out my three-mark question video, please do. I did a whole video on how to mark, how to tackle three-mark questions like really easily. And they are super easy, by the way. And one of the ways you can do it is with this simple strategy here. You can always get three marks if you make two points and back one of them up with evidence. I always say it's safer to back both of them up with evidence just in case one of the evidences is not very good. But that's all you need. Two points and one bit of evidence. And then this one, you can even just do three points. It says, do you think Martine will change her behavior on future giraffe rides? Yes, no, or maybe. Now, the funny bit is you can tick any of these. It doesn't give you any mark. It actually doesn't matter. You just have to be able to justify it. In this case, I'm going to go for maybe. Maybe you go for yes, maybe you go for no. But can you think of some reasons? Can you think of some reasons why she might change her behavior in the future, but also some reasons why she might not change her behavior and only make it based on the text? What can you tell me that happened in this story that proves your point. Pause the video, write them down. Okay, let's have a look then. So I've got the text here. I've got the whole thing. Um, I'm gonna pick out a couple of things, I guess. So the reason I've said maybe is because I think she might change her behavior because of the scare that she had with the warthogs. And the reason I think that my evidence to suggest that, I th that she might change her behavior is the fact that she, where is it? She rode the rest of the way home at a gentle walk, a thoughtful smile on her lips. That to me is the evidence that she's rethinking her bad decision and maybe gonna listen to grandma this time. So I'm gonna go back to my question and I'm gonna get my first point with my first bit of evidence. I'm already gonna bank two marks by saying, um, maybe because after the warthog scare, or the warthog incident, perhaps is a better answer. Um, Martine then took her grandma's advice. And now I'm going to prove it because the text says, my favorite phrase here, guys, because the text says, she walked home. Two marks out of three marks already. Now, all I need to get the whole three marks is another point, and I don't even need to back it up. So if you're confident with your evidence for the first point, you don't need to waste time backing up the second one as well. So I just need another thing. I've put maybe, so now I want something that kind of contradicts this and goes the other way around. Um, I also think, I'm going to put however, to really back up my idea of maybe. However... There were plenty of times in the past. What do you think I want to say here, guys? Where she ignored rules and did what she wanted anyway. Now, if I wanted to really back up my point here, and use evidence. I would use a new phrase now that, that says, this suggests, and then I'd finish that sentence. What does it suggest? If she's, if she's ignored rules loads of times in the past, this suggests she's likely to break the rules again. 
That to me is a four mark out of three mark question because you only need two points of one evidence. It's not that bad, is it guys, really? If you think about it, yeah, it's a little bit of writing. But was it that bad? Do I think she'll change her behavior? Yeah, because it did scare her and she did change her behavior there and then, but also no, because she hadn't changed her behavior loads of times in the past, so she might do it again. Done. It's not so bad, right? Let's look at the next question. I'm going to use this text again to help me. Oh, here are some acceptable points, by the way. Here was the um, the mark scheme. So you could have said uh, for, for yes, if you could have put maybe, by the way, but on the yes side of it, you can say that she'd started to listen, which is the point I made. She got a fright or she found herself in danger and she'd learned from the experience. And you could back all of those up with that evidence that I used that she ended up walking home. And you could say no because, well, she's been in danger before and not been hurt. You could say she's stubborn, which we, you can use the you know evidence from earlier on. She doesn't listen to others, and the evidence would be the fact that she doesn't listen to her grandma. Or you could say that, no, because she still had fun. She's still adventurous. She's still thrill-seeking, so she won't learn from it. Any of those points are great. You just have to back up at least one of them with evidence from the text by using the phrase, because the text says, and you'll get it every single time. There's another three-mark question that comes up straight after it. How nasty is that? And this one uh, is a really interesting one. Because it says, in what ways might Martine's character appeal to many readers? Now, if that doesn't mean much to you, appeal just means why might they like her? And if you like a character, it's got to be positive, hasn't it? So I'm going to reword this question for you. This question is essentially saying, it's a posh way of saying, what are some positive things about Martin? Martine, what's some positive things about her? That's it. Okay, you know, what, what might people like about her? There's a million things you could put here, guys. This is the easiest question in the world to do without looking at the text. Okay, just think about Martine's character. What's cool or positive or, you know, what could you describe about her that's not a negative thing? She's adventurous. Yeah, she's adventurous. Definitely. She's fun-loving, isn't she? Like, she really enjoys having a good time, clearly. Um, what else could we say? She's determined. Why not just use things from earlier in the paper? We've already mentioned that she's determined in another question. We might as well use it. It's still, a, it's still a point. We save ourselves some time. Do you want to know something really funny? I would get three marks if I wrote that in the box. Three words or four words, one typhonated. I'm not even joking. You'd get three marks for that. Now, normally you need some evidence sometimes. So I would always say go with, go with evidence to be safe, but it just happens that the mark scheme for this one said you can just have three points, three acceptable points. Now, what I would do is I'd probably have three points and I'd probably just back up one of them. Determined, adventure. what am I going to back up? Adventurous, because in the story, what does she do? Literally just mention anything that she does that's adventurous. In the story, she, ride, she rides a wild giraffe without any reins. It's three mark questions are not as scary as they need to be. All right, guys, hopefully that's really clear to you now. What was hard was interpreting what this question means. Why might, what, how might her character appeal to others? What that means is what, what's interesting about her character. That's it, really. Cool. There's one more question to go through. Um, here are some more answers, by the way. You can say she was fun, brave, resilient, calm under pressure, unconventional. That means like does things differently. Strong-willed, determined. So any of those things with a bit of evidence or just three things would get you the marks. Last question. Now, this is my least favorite question. I actually really dislike this question. And I think this might be one of the reasons that the 2016 paper was deemed as so hard because this is just unnecessarily confusingly worded in my opinion. So I'm gonna let you have a go. I'm not even gonna read it for you. This is your final test. Have a go at this question. Um, use everything you've learned in this video to have a go. See if you can get it right, even though it's horrible. So we just have to match each part of the story with a correct quotation. And I just find it weird, each part of the story, but setting, past events, action, and lesson just seems so weird. But if we read them, we'll soon realize what it means. For a while, Martine had defied her. In the instant before her body parted company, Dawn was casting spun gold threads, and that would teach her to show off. That, to me, is clearly a lesson. So now I'm starting to think, oh, I sort of get this. You have to match it up with what, what it is. So that's an example of a lesson. All right, then. What describes the setting? So the setting is the environment. What, what, only one of these things is clearly describing the setting. It's that first sentence from the first paragraph where it's describing the African savannah. So those two are really obvious. And then we've just got two left. One of them happened in the past and one of them is just like an action moment, like so something where there's action in the story. Well, actually, look, I've copied this bit down here for you where it says in the instant before her body parted company with the white giraffes, Martine caught this whole scene here is that action scene, isn't it? Where she where she falls off of the giraffe because of the warthog. So that one clearly goes of action, which leaves this one, which we can equally just justify anyway by thinking about it. For a while, Martine had defied her. I remember in the story that it's talking about grandma here 
and um, it's obviously talking about in the past she had well, for a while it literally says for a while as in it's already been going on she has defied or not listened to her grandma so just a bit of common sense really you can solve that one i don't think it's a very nice question it's worded pretty terribly um, but there we go guys we have finished that that is the second text of the 2016 paper the notorious horribly horribly hard paper and we've done it now i know this is a long video you know coming on 40 minutes or so and you probably you wouldn't have 40 minutes to sit there and spend going through that that text but realistically if you think about it if i wasn't talking through every single question and answer you could have done that in 20 minutes don't you think i reckon you could absolutely have read that text in about five minutes and spent 15 minutes going through those questions and that would be a reasonable amount of time to do so so trust me when i say you're ready you're gonna get you're gonna ace this sats Guys, in the comments, write one key skill. Prove to me that I did something today and I didn't just waffle on. Write one key skill that you learned from this video that you're going to use now. You're, you're set on it. You're thinking, yes, I'm going to do that um, when I do my reading stats paper to help me get more marks. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to read through them and I will reply. I will even pin my favorite one. So maybe it's going to be you. Anyway, guys, make sure you stick around for part three because I'm going to go through the final text of the 2016 paper. You thought this one was hard. Oh my days, the final text is just something else. So come back for that video um, and I'll, I'll see you there.